Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. As my lessons progress on through the Grade 6 ABRSM Music Theory Workbook, my lessons now move on to Question 5, Exercise 1, in which we investigate and analyse a short orchestral extract. In this short orchestral extract, we analyse the role of specific woodwind and string instruments and we look at the specific requirements for these instruments as they perform this piece of music. We are asked to transpose horn parts and clarinet parts from the orchestral score. We are asked to identify certain melodic sequences and then we are asked to suggest a musical period, a year in which this could have been composed and we suggest a composer who would be appropriate for this piece of music looking at the clues that are provided to us when we analyse the orchestral score in front of us. The full lesson can be found on my Patreon channel. If you visit patreon.com forward slash Sharon Bill, you'll find the full lesson there. You'll find the link to this lesson in the cards and in the description box below. After this short little video, you'll see sample examples of this lesson to show you how I work with you step by step through every part of this exercise, showing you how to find the answers quickly and easily from the score and all of the information that you require to understand all of the rules of harmony and the expectations of certain orchestral instruments can be found in my Harmony and Composition textbook. This is available from Amazon and you'll find the links to this in the cards and in the description box below. And of course, all of the information that you require can be found on my website. If you visit www.sharonbill.com, you'll find all of the information there. Enjoy your studies. Bye. Now, a little bit more thinking is required here because we're asked which instrument has only uh, has to has to use the open string there's, there's only one and it has to use the open string and so before we can answer that we need to know what strings are being used because a, a string player will only use an open string when there is no other alternative, uh, they usually would use a string that is stopped to create the pitch, you know, with your finger just pressing on the string like a, a fret kind of thing. Although I'm sure you shouldn't say that with regard to string instruments. However, it will use an open string if there is no other alternative. And the reason that would be is because it's the lowest note and if you stop it that raises the pitch and it needs to be that lowest possible pitch so this is where I've written out what the string tuning for each of the strings is and there's a way that you can remember that and so we have the violin and the bass sort of reversed and the viol the viola and the cello are the same string names at least so that's our starting point so here we can see that this note here is the lowest viola string. That's the low C there, this one. That's quite sort of easy to spot quite quickly. And so because that's a low C, that has got to be an open string there. So we want a clarinet sounding in the key of F major horn and we're in the treble clef for the horn as well sounding in the key of F major and we're doing bars four and five so let's give ourselves a couple of bars so bar four and bar five we want the two complete bars and so let's think what we're going to be doing here. So let's start with the clarinet. So we know, we're looking at this bar here, so here the clarinet is playing a C, but it's going to sound a whole tone lower, so it's actually going to sound a B flat with our new key signature. It's just going to be a step down, so it was playing on a note C, so now it's going to be a B 
flat. The key signature does that for us. And then it drops in steps. So instead of being a B, it's going to be an A. And so that's our next bar. And that's uh, just a crotchet, isn't it? And, and then we're going to need a quaver-esque, because we've still got to get all the details in. Crotchet, quaver-esque, making sure we've got all the other details in. And now we sort of pull back even further. We've done some kind of microscopic work here. And now in this final question, we're going to have to pull back even further and we're just going to kind of widen our gaze and look at the score and think, what sort of music is it that we're playing here? And we need to choose a period of music. And so generally speaking, here we're looking at sort of, um, a, a generally speaking, a Baroque period piece in this era sort of moving to the end of that period. Here we're looking, generally speaking, at a sort of a classical period. And think about your composers, so your Baroque is your Bach period, your classical is gonna be like your Mozart and your Haydn. Here we're moving into the Romantic period. This is kind of your, your Tchaikovsky's and your Grieg and your Chopin's and sort of all, it's a very wide umbrella term here. And then here we're sort of heading into early 20th century, getting much more modern, sort of late Romantic, moving into the Impressionists and the Debussy's and moving into the, the 20th century, which is more experimental. And so if it was a Baroque piece, you would expect to see um, an orchestral continuo with figured bass. You wouldn't see horns like this either. And you wouldn't see flutes like this.